so cheer up My sister The great day is near When we will meet The Lord Jesus Soon we'll be.
from henceforth, yea, save the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. For the thief cometh to kill and to rob. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We have come here this morning to give God thanks and to celebrate the life of Mr. Kenneth Anderson. And it is against this background, ladies and gentlemen, that we invite you to turn to the program in your hands as we sing the opening hymn. O oh Lord, my God.
Father in heaven, and Almighty God, the Heavenly Father. Indeed, Lord, we want to give you thanks, we praise, we glorify your name, we magnify your name. We acknowledge thou art sovereign God, that you are the creator of heaven and earth, the maker of man, the giver of life and sustainer of all things. We worship you in the beauty of holiness. Loving God, we have come this morning to give you all the glory you so deserve. And at this time, Lord, we want to lift up before you those who mourn, those who are bereaved. We lift up before you, God, the family members of the deceased as they go through these difficult times, oh God. We ask that you would give them strength, that you would hold on to them, oh God as they navigate through these difficult and challenging times. Take control of each of us here this morning and may someone, may someone by hearing the word of God recognize that Jesus Christ is the only Savior of anyone who needs salvation. Bless us now we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We will now invite Mr. Everett Anderson to come with the first lesson, Psalms 39, 4 to 30, and that will be followed by a selection from Ruth Henry. Jesus, save 
I never heard my brother and no one, I mean no one at all, in any form of argument at all. He was such an amazing person who you could talk to about anything and he would tell you something with interest. He was just an humble soul. Brother, you have left us with a lot of memory and loved the one too. We will all miss you and I know your soul will rest in peace. You are also missed by others too. Well, God has called you home, so rest well, my brother. We all love you. Your memory will always be in your heart. Thank you. We have now reached the tributes, and the first one is Beverly Barrett, family friend, and then we have Ziggy. So Beverly. It was in the year 2007, I came to Planka to work as a security guard. So I was placed at, at end of the day. The morning in question, I heard the person, who they are? Who they are? I still not answer because come down to show hearing about Planka, I was afraid. Then he said, security, come out here. So when I came outside, he said, Me name Wood. You are the mechanic of Madison. The air is a new security supposed to come here near Barrett. He said, my name is Gurley. I didn't want to use my surname. He said, that can't wear the coat. So tell me why you're here. He said, OK, I will. We have come a bank since that day. He said, over there, Miss Millie, Dana, and Dwight over there. If you want anything, don't stare at me. You can go up above a Jew, and you can go up a Jew. The, the restaurant, I don't remember the guy. But he said, I should go up here. If you just know me, I'm going you. <laughs> and we formed a band ever since 2007. When I was leaving Florida, every April, they go to the fish for Ricky. And be joke. I never forgot their birthday. And he said, Granny, come down here, come eat one fish. But come back and I'll gather some man will come. And I will do that. Sometimes some people come and say, Big you, the gas done. Big you don't have the money. Yeah, big you, girl, me and I and our gas. You want money, we just keep to buy gas. But you know, he just want to help somebody. And that was big you. When I migrate, he never go back on my birthday. I never go back his birthday. When he took sick, he keep in touch. I will do what I can do. When he couldn't call, little you could call or whoever, and I will keep in touch with him. When I speak to big youth on his birthday, I said to my sister, I said, Naomi, because he's not going to make it. And Naomi said, where is he now? And a day or two after Leo called, he said, Bernie, he built his own moments. I love him, and I always love him because he's a people person. What he don't give is what he don't have. May so rest in peace and like that to the shine of power. We have Russia Anderson, Delta. And this thing is not here neither. Alright, and at this time, we have Hopi Trigo. Is anybody who wants to do Trigo in this open? And please make it shout, alright? Thank you. Alright, we have three space for the Trigo. So, Big U was my uncle. What I can remember most about him was whenever there was a carnal leave at the ball field, I would always feel secure to go down there because I know my uncle is just right across the road. And there was never a time 
where I went over there and I said, Kenneth, you want some of the drink or some and you can buy me. If you don't have it, you can go over the shop and take it and you will pay them back. He was always kind um, and loving to me and he always checked for me. When I was small, you know, always had me in, in his lap, um, driving around in his car. He was like a father to me. And for those memories, I will forever cherish his kindness. And may God bless his soul. I love him.
after a few years, we met Donna and their relationship produced beautiful baby girl, Monique Anderson. Can pass. When we met Charmaine and where he conceived his first son, Kurt Anderson, and AKA Bojo, and another bouncing baby girl, Sean Anderson. He later embraced in a relationship with Karen, and she gave him, and she gave birth to his son, a second son, who took his middle name, Donovan Anderson, from him known as the Brio. As a devoted father, to his four wonderful children, he cherished every moment spent with them, ensuring they went to school and got an education. He instilled them the values of hard work, fun, resilience in them. Big youths embrace life with and caring, going spirit, and a joyful heart. Every challenge you face with harmless and God, he didn't get upset often. This easy going nature made him, made him appreciable and a great friend to many. Most of his life was spent at the public works where he worked. Big youth was very good at his job. He would look on the car and tell you what's wrong without even pulling it apart. He loved his job and was very passionate about it. He left behind five biological sisters. Maureen, Maureen again. <laughs> Marilyn, UK Anderson, and myself, Debbie. Adopted sister Angela, known as Two. Adopted. <laughs> Two men at God Rogers. Delroy. And standing out there. And the adopted brothers, Devon, Leroy, and Frederick. Through his service, his passing, through his service, his passing, let us all also celebrate the memories he leaves behind. Kenneth B. Hugh Anderson taught us the importance of enjoying life or being there for one another and of finding happiness in our everyday moments. He will be deeply missed, but his spirit will live on in our hearts. Of those who knew and loved him, let us rise a glass in honor remembrance, the joy has brought into our life, and the love we hard, hard, we hard work. Rest in peace, Kenny, your legacy, our laughter and love will never fail. You're missing by Millicent, the family of Public Work Department, and a lot more. So you're well missing. Rest in peace, Ken. We now call Ziggy to come and do what he has to do for us. Ziggy? Church. Evening church. That is good. That is good. That is good. Not just all the things going on, 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 all the things going on. Uh, we can't, 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 we
And the only way you can live this life to the best of your ability is to live for Jesus Christ. Because yes. there's no way, no way out of heaven or earth where man can be saved. But to the precious blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Yeah. That's the right process of that. Every time of the day, I'm going to walk. See the direct process of that. Anyone? Yeah. So, he says, see our price, and it can last so hard to repay, you know? Yeah. That is a good God. Hallelujah.
and this answer by the person that the Lord has chosen to speak to us is our first elder of Franca Abedi Church. He is our first elder. Elder Bertram Ada is the one the Lord has chosen to bless our heart. So I pray for your God divided attention. But before we hear a word from the Lord, we have Sister Pan Piercy who bless our heart. The main one to be our speaker. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. There is a place in heaven prepared for me. When the power of this life is over.
Today is a sad occasion. Last week, we funeralized Miss Herman. And today, we are funeralizing her son. We cannot say that we are feeling your pain. We can just imagine what you are going through. We can just imagine what you are feeling. Going through this kind of process is hard. Hard. Someone once said that death is like the chill of an Arctic night. It's cold. It is unwanted. It is an intruder. But it inevitably knock at everybody's door, whether you like it or not. Death will come to all of us. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. But after that, the judgment. Let us pray. Oh God and our heavenly Father, we ask, Lord, that you will stand by your word today and take the sound that seems to be my voice and glorify yourself, oh God. Give strength and comfort, Father, to those who mourn today. Look now, O oh God, with compassion on your people. And at the end of today's service, may somebody, someone, make the right choice in choosing Jesus, the only Savior, for anyone who needs salvation. In Jesus' name, we pray. Many years ago, 174 passengers filed on a united red, white, and blue airliner destined for Portland in Oregon. It was the holiday season. Little children with their shopping bags and gifts filed on that aircraft. It was, as the story goes, it was a beautiful flight. They were laughing and chit-chatting. And children were playing with their new toys. It was a beautiful, wonderful, smooth flight. Headed home. The, the, the freezing winter Chill outside, didn't have a chance to damn the joyful holiday spirit of those aboard that flight. Singing, gleeful giggling of children, their toys reaper reverberated throughout that beach. Some passengers played cards. Some fell asleep as though they were tranquilized. And then 
It happened. It happened. The captain of the, the aircraft observed a flashing amber light on the dashboard of the airplane. And now it seemed to him that the aircraft is running out of fuel. So the captain went over the intercom and notified the passengers of the problem, saying that the aircraft would circle the airport for 10 or 20 minutes while they try to make the necessary adjustments. Silence fell over the once joyful aircraft. Captain McBroom once again came over the intercom, but this time he was in a little distress. He said, we have circled once, twice, and now we are out of fuel. And on top of that, the landing gears are not coming down. The plane crashed. Crashed. The passengers died. Could it be? Could it be, ladies and gentlemen, that on the dashboard of this aircraft, planet Earth, could it be that the warning lights are flashing? The time, time is running out. Could it be like the captain of that aircraft, Jesus is warning? The inhabitants, the passengers of this aircraft, planet Earth, that time is running out. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to say to you is that the party is over. It's over. The signs of the times are telling us that this aircraft, this planet, is rushing towards a cataclysmic collision with time itself. This planet, this aircraft is coming to the end of its long and eventful history. So, Likewise, the Bible says, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near. The coming of Jesus is near. It is even at the door. But as the days of Noah were, before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving into marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. If you live on the same planet that I live on, you will agree with me that we are living in extraordinary times. These are dangerous times. And God is still shouting from the top Thou shalt not take my name in vain. 
no wonder we live in a lawless society where men kill men and rape little children. Today, men has fallen so low, lower than animals. And men who were made in the image of Almighty God, who were supposed to behave like God, think like God, is now behaving like dogs. I stop by this morning to let you know, to say to you, in all of my 66 years on this planet, I have never seen a homosexual dog in my life. As a matter of fact, some animals wouldn't even do. If two bears are fighting and one surrender, the other one walk away. Today, not so with man. You're in a fight and you surrender. You're dead. There are certain kind of goose. They make for life. They made for life. Not man. Man has six and seven and eight girlfriend plus a wife. Not even goose would do that. They make for life. What has gone wrong with mankind? Sin has debased the man. But I know somebody who can lift you from the uttermost to the uttermost. And his name is Jesus. He said, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. He said, today, today is the acceptable time of salvation. And come, he calls, let us reason together. Though your sin, it doesn't matter what you have done. In this life, it doesn't matter how black your sins have been. You could have drink rum this morning, smoke ganja this morning, kill this rape this morning. Jesus said, Come and let's talk it over. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Ladies and gentlemen. I challenge you. I challenge to you this morning. And my responsibility is to stand here on the top of my voice and shout and tell you tomorrow is not promise. Today could be the last. Some of us live as sleep years. No God, no accountability. But let me tell you something, beloved friend. You are living in the judgment of our Almighty God. You are on probation. What will the records of your life reveal to the unsearching eyes of Almighty God when you look through the record? What will it say? Will you be found wanting? Or will you? Will you? Will your name remain in the Lamb's Book of Life? Will your sins be brought in the world? I challenge you today to give your life to Jesus. Surrender your hearts to Jesus before it's too late. Today could be your last day to sit here, to see your father, your mother, your children, to go to your job, your last day. And Jesus is calling. Come. 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 Come to the feast today. 
so that when this world is on fire, when the mountains are moving, when the lightning are dancing in terrifying display, when the thunder shall argue with one another, and when Jesus shall burst the eastern sky, coming back to this earth in power and great glory, will you be running then? Are you, are you going to be able to stand up and hail him as your Lord and Savior from sin? Give your hearts to Jesus.
and that he has promised eternal life to love him. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. In the street, by and by, we shall see the beautiful shore. In the street, by and by, we shall see the beautiful shore. We shall see the beautiful shore.